Well, wonderful. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I like to, in, with my classes, like to start in prayer. So that's the first thing that I'll do. Some of you that have had a class with me, you're familiar with that. So let's invite the Lord's presence. I'll give you a little bit of an idea of what we'll cover in the class and then specifically what we'll cover today. And um, so I think you'll hopefully you'll really like the material we're going to cover. So um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just invite you here in our midst. I pray that you will be working in the lives of each of the students in this course. Pray that you would help each of them to understand the material, Lord. I pray that they can get excited about this, how it contributes to the overall plan for, for them as they're reaching towards the, the job that they would like to be getting as they finish with APU. Also pray that you would help them in their spiritual formation, Lord, help them to really enjoy their time of um, studying scripture and to derive the, the theological concepts that are behind all that. And we ask all, all this in, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, this is actually a, a lot of fun for me to, to teach this course. Um, that's the the good news, one of the, the difficult things, it's a, it's a topic that's kind of hard to get your arms around. It's sort of like when I say system engineering, it means a lot to me because of a lot of the things that I've been exposed to on the job. I never studied system engineering in school. I studied electrical engineering. So for you guys studying general engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, or some combination of that is probably what you're doing. And that's actually how I did it. But when I started to work on large enterprise level types of projects that where I was in aerospace, that was a thing that day one, I was involved in system engineering. And so it was very easily something that I got a chance to get exposed to. So we're going to be covering that. And so there's going to be three textbooks that we'll be using in this cover slide is highlighting um, at least according to what I found is I think is probably the, the best text that really covers this and it's on systems engineering principles and practice. And there's um, several ways that you can get that. And I have that in the syllabus. You could get the hard copy, which I have. Um, you can get the ebook copy, which I also have. And there's also something that just came out on the last six months. You can get it through Zybooks. And so some of you might be familiar with Zybooks. And so any of those options that you find um, or something that you would like, um, feel free to, to take advantage of. Um, it is a fairly rigorous um, textbook and there's a lot of things that are covered. And so my goal is to at least touch on every chapter, some of the material that is associated with, with this textbook. And so um, I think it, it is quite um, quite good. We're also gonna get a chance to be looking at doing some modeling. And there's something called um, SysML. And this next textbook is something that's also quite useful. Um, it's called A Practical Guide to, to SysML. And the, the authors are folks that have been instrumental in the development of the SysML language, um, modeling language. Maybe some of you have heard of um, UML, the Unified Modeling Language. And so this is like a derivative from UML that focuses on how you actually model the characteristics of a, of a system. And so about half of our class is going to be focused on doing some modeling. And so um, hopefully that you'll find that enjoyable and something that is emerging to be a key part of system engineering is something called model-based system engineering. And so I'll, I'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, the, the main textbook tends to be more um, focused on programs that would be related to the Department of Defense, which includes things like navigation, um, um, and but they do talk about other types of applications, weather systems, airlines, and, and stuff like that. But uh, another textbook that I included is the NASA System Engineering Handbook. This is something that you can just download directly from, from NASA. The thing that I really love about NASA is everything that they do is meant to be shared. And so um, um, it's, it's quite easy to get some quite excellent resources on this. And so I, I will have some material that I'll highlight here just to give you some perspective since it's um, not 
it, it's a complementary to what is the focus for our system engineering principles and practice. So we're going to have um, 23 chapters. So I'm going to at least have a sampling from each one of those 23 chapters. So probably about each time we meet, I'll have a, a discussion on one of these chapters. And so um, the general rule of thumb is Tuesdays will be a, a little bit more lecture and Thursdays will be more of a lab. And what I'm going to do on Thursdays is make it via Zoom so you can be in the comfort of where it's most convenient for you. And what I'll do is I'm going to be introducing on Tuesday the, the, the modeling tool that we will be using is something called Visual Paradigms. It's... Um, and I'll also be showing another tool, um, Visual Paradigms. There's a community edition that's free. All you have to do is just register with your email and you can download that. And so it's quite comprehensive. It has all of the capabilities that I will be showing. Um, I have a, a modeler um, version, which is like $100 to get a subscription. So if you end up um, finding that you like it. I have had some students that have found that useful. And so that is a resource that you can be thinking about. So there's going to be five sections that we'll be talking about from our main textbook. First of all, we'll get into foundations. And so really these first four chapters, um, it really covers the lion's share of what we're going to get into in this course, but at a higher level. And then we have these three main sections that talk about um, system development. First of all, you have to develop the concept. So what is it that you want to engineer? And then you actually do the engineering development. And then you have, after it's been deployed, the operational state. And then after that, we'll get into a little bit more discussion on system domains. Um, system of system or enterprise system engineering. And I think that will also be interesting to, to get a chance to, to talk about. Well, I'm gonna come back to this and I'll go through chapter one, but let me introduce some of the material in Canvas um, so that you're aware of that. So it tends to, to do this, it stops sharing when I go out of full screen mode. So, over to Canvas. So first of all, um, for the, the course textbooks, um, each one of these are, are listed here. You can get them through the, the bookstore. They've also made these references available. And so the, the first one, you can either get it through the APU bookstore. You can go to any book retailer that you prefer. Um, here is the publisher's website. And so when you click on this page, from Canvas, you'll get to that. And then third, thirdly, there is a Zybook options. And so this is what it would look like. And so I've created a course for this, this semester, System Engineering Principles. And so if you go to, to that, I think if I just click on this. So what this does, it has a, um, just an ebook fashion way of, um, reading the, the textbook. Um, it also has these, um, these participation type of activity questions. You can feel free to be using. Those are also um, the information, the lion's share of the information that I used for the quizzes that I'll have in, um, in the course. The second book is the Practical Guide to SysML. And uh, the last time I checked, it's the, the third edition. And so um, this is, I, I have an electronic copy of, of that. And so this is where we're going to get a chance to get some more insight into um, uh, the, how we would go about doing this model-based system engineering. So, I will reiterate this over the next few times we meet, but since you guys are going to be doing a project of your own, the first thing that you need to come up with is a project idea. And so um, I will talk a little bit more about this on Thursday, but that will be the, the first thing that you're going to be contributing in terms of your, your project development. The last is the, the NASA system engineering guide. And so this is a link where you can get, get, get that. 
And so those are some, some resources that are available. Um, over the, um, the last handful of months, um, I actually did some fairly um, detailed um, recordings of the, the material. So if um, this is going to be um, an exhaustive way of looking at the material in the textbook. And so this is just the first of um, like probably about 40 different lectures that focus on each of the, the chapters in this textbook. And so you can feel free to, to look at that. And so I have it on YouTube and I have a playlist that you can go ahead and, and leverage um, as you would like. Um, I also have a couple other lectures and this will be some stuff that I'll talk about that introduces the whole idea of um, SysML and how you can be doing this model-based system engineering. And so this first one is related to our um, the, the textbook that I mentioned here with the, the practical guide to, to SysML. And so that's a lecture that um, is derived from one of the authors. And there's also another one that I did that was using a slightly different textbook, um, just a, a handbook for, for SysML. And so this views this whole SysML um, process through a, a satellite system development, which is for folks that are familiar with the CubeSat development that we have been doing here at APU, that might be an interesting thing for, for you to be aware of. Um, then you have the, the lecture notes that I'm gonna be using. You can download those. There's the, the Zoom link that we'll be using. So on Thursdays, um, that's going to be available. And there's a, a chapter quiz for each of the chapters. And then we have um, the, 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 all of the details that we're going to be doing with our model-based system engineering. So there's going to be, there's nine different views that are captured in SysML. And so we're gonna be doing uh, one of those for that project that you're going to be developing. So on Thursdays for me, I will show you a sample CubeSat um, system that I've developed. And there's also another topic that I'm, I have not actually coded it yet, but this will be some stuff that I'll be doing real time. And I'll get into that a little bit on Thursday. So that's something that you can be thinking about. Are we actually building it? Or are we Modeling it. Okay. Yeah. So it, in a sense, it is building, but you're building a model, if you will, an electronic model. And so um, I'll show you with this free version, there's a certain amount of things that you can do if you were to get a more enhanced version, you can actually do in an executable model. There's a different tool that I'll be showing some of that. Uh, um, it's, it's a tool called, it's actually has several names, but no magic um, is, is one of the, the, the names that I'm more familiar with. And so there's visual paradigms. There's another tool that I'll be using on Thursdays that you can also get a chance to see that is an enterprise level tool that multiple places where I've been involved in, in large enterprise system projects, they, they use this tool. So just to give you a sense of um, the, the mixture of things that we have, and so the quizzes is just a little bit over 20%. So there's a one quiz, one um, quiz per chapter. Um, about 50% is going to be the, the project work. Um, and so since I have a lot of quizzes, there isn't a midterm. And so kind of, it's almost like snipping into pieces that midterm into a quiz that we'll be taking um, as we go through the material. Um, sorry? Like it's more based off sizes. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the quizzes that I'm taking for this course, you're not gonna be taking it through Zybooks. Yeah. It will be, it's material that I derive from that, but it's it's basically, it's all done within Canvas. And so I had to code that all by hand. So if you find any errors, let me know. I'll be glad to give you a few extra points for, for that. So there will be a final and there is a partic 
participation component. So be thinking about that. And also a faith integration. I always like to have some type of way of thinking about how we're applying this information practically um, with what we're, we're doing. And you could download the, the syllabus, but the, the way I've set it up in Canvas, it also gives you a quick and easy way of looking at that. Um, so any, but there's also a download bo button that you can do whenever you would like. Okay. So um, is that like in class or do that? It's on your own. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be during class. Yeah. I'll put a link to um, visual paradigms. I, I forgot to put that in here. So um, I, I completely redid this course starting over the summer and, and, and in the fall, but um, I'll, I'll get a chance to um, share that with you with you all. So I think I can, can just quickly just give you um, an idea of what it looks like. So it's, it is called Visual Paradigms. And I, I will put something in Canvas and this will be something that we'll be focusing on for, for Thursday. And so this is um, something that I've been working on with, with previous cl classes. And I also have done a bunch of other stuff um, that, that I've done um on other types of things using this tool um yeah so um i'll just arbitrarily pull up one one of the the first things that we're going to be doing is um after you develop your proposal the first thing we'll be doing is a use case scenario and so this is what that is going to, to look about look like, but we'll talk about this on, on Thursday and I'll get into this a little bit more. And so this is like um, an actor and this is what he does. And so for example, a CubeSat controller would, would configure the CubeSat. And so this is the verb, this is the noun. And you can think about this relationships. And so this, these stick figures do things to this system and you're trying to capture it at an extremely high level. This would be like, say, um, APU was um, developing a CubeSat for JPL. And so JPL is a customer. And so we would be talking to JPL that we have these different types of capabilities and what they're going to do. And so this is a way of useful um, mechanism to be com communicating with sponsors. So that's gonna be the first thing that we're going to be starting to, to flush out. So we'll talk, we'll focus on that on Thursday, but um, I'm going to focus the, our time now on um, going through the, the chapter one. And so, So it's like looking at system engineering at a, a very high level is what we're we're doing in this this first chapter, um, and so this is going to give you an introduction to it. It's also going to be helping you think about well, how would you develop, and if you were going to be a system engineer, and um, it is a fascinating area, and it is something that's cross cutting. So, so what is system engineering? It's a tough thing to explain to somebody that doesn't have a perspective, but you being engineering students, I think you're probably in a much better sense of being able to, to figure this out. So uh, the function of system engineering is to guide the engineering of complex systems. So that's a key set of words. Um, you don't have to be using system engineering if you're just gonna be designing an amplifier or something like that. But if you start to think of an aggregation of a lot of different things together, that would be something where it would start to 
be a necessary element. A system is defined as a set of interrelated components working together towards a common objective. Furthermore, a complex engineered system is comprised of a multiplicity of intricately inter interrelated diverse elements. And so here, you can think of yourself as a conductor, if you, if you, if you will. It requires system that requires system engineering to lead its development. And so system engineering differs from traditional engineering in that it focuses on the system as a whole. So your expertise is knowing a little bit about everything. So you tend to be a little bit broad um, and, and being able to converse with all of those different areas. It's concerned with customer needs and operational environment. Um, it leads system con conceptual designs. And so in the very beginning, before you actually starting to um, build things, you have to figure out exactly what you're going to do. Um, it bridges traditional engineering disciplines and, and, and gaps between specialties. And so moreover, system engineering is an integral part of project management in that it plans and guides the engineering effort. So some of you over time may find that you're interested in management and being a system engineer can be a good precursor for helping you along that, that way. So in terms of a system engineering landscape, um, systems will be more complex, network intensive, autonomous, capable, intelligent, adaptable, robust, and secure. You can see this is happening all, all over the place. Tesla, for example, an autonomous vehicle. Um, you can be thinking about GPS. That's something that I've worked on. Just having a navigation system that anywhere around the world, and not only around the world, satellites actually use GPS to, to figure out where they are. And so that is a huge enterprise to know exactly um, um, to you know, X and Y, your, your, where you are on a flat map, if you will, as well as the elevation. All of those are things that are involved. So drivers will include economics, risks, both known and knowns. So you can have to have a way of having an assessment of what things that you don't know from advancing technology and innovation, increasing complexity and in interfaces, expanded system applications, social impacts, new autonomy and expected agility. So there's just a, a lot that's there. So it's like, how do we start to develop a system engineering viewpoint? The system engineering viewpoint is focused on producing a successful system that meets requirements and develops development objectives. So a big part of system engineering is once you have some general sense, and like I showed you very briefly, a, um, a use case diagram, figuring out specifically the requirements. A requirement has a noun and a verb, and it also has shall. Shall is a contractual word that means that that is something that has to be validated as part of the, the design. So is it successful in the operation of the field and it achieves its desired operating life? In order to, to achieve the, the definition of success, a system engineer must balance superior performance with affordability and schedule constraints. In fact, many aspects of system engineering involve achieving a balance among conflicting objectives. And so you got to make this work. And one person says, this is, it has to be this way. Another person says, no, it has to be that way. And you have to work out some way of coming up with a compromise. For example, the system engineering typically must apply a new technology to the development of a new system while managing the inherent risk that the new technology poses. So to meet the, the user's objectives, you need to raise the bar to a, a new level of technology, and but you want to make sure that it, things still work. Throughout the development period, the system engineering focuses on the total system, making decisions based on the impacts and capabilities of the system as a whole. A system engineer goes through the whole life cycle of a project development. When you're talking about enterprise level systems, these things can take years, maybe even a decade to actually go from concept to actually having it deployed. And that's maybe a time frame that sounds very strange, but imagine if you have GPS and you need at least 24 satellites, 
you know, it's going to take a while to build all those, deploy them, and then have it actually operate as a system to get it finely tuned that anywhere in the world, you can know your position within a meter, within a centimeter, even trying to get you down to the millimeter level. And so the farther that precision goes, there's more things that become an issue. So often this is accomplished by bridging multiple disciplines and, and components to ensure a total solution. So we go, it's actually three dimensional, but to give you perspective uh, on that, um, a specialized design is one dimensional. You have a subject matter expert that really knows this one thing well. Planning control is two dimensional. So now you're having to, to think in terms of the management perspective. But system engineering is three-dimensional. It has a great technical breadth. It has moderate technical depth. So you can actually talk the talk with each of these experts. And then there's also a management expertise that you have to make things happen. You're more technical than a general manager, but you're having to think about all of those different things. And so this just gives you an idea of a handful of perspectives that are out there. And so let's say that we're designing an airplane or something, and so aerodynamics is important. Um, so the way that they would be looking at a design for an aircraft or something like that is this, trying to streamline it to make it as aerodynamically as possible. But guess what? If you have an engine on it, that's gonna be a completely different point of view. And so they're just trying to think that they need to get the most amount of um, oxygen in there, to be storing fuel and then to get the maximum amount of thrust. As you can see, it's, it's very different. For some of you that may be mechanical or have that perspective, you can see this is just like an I-beam out here sticking out front. So you're just trying to think of the structural. It needs to have a certain amount of rigidity. You have to be thinking about um, harmonics and stuff like that. Um, and then guidance. And so, and from their point of view, you need to have lots of good sensors. Production, you want it to be as simple, 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 simple as possible. You can just see how this would be a very simple airframe, if you will, but it would be lacking other things. Uh, controls, you would want to have things mechanized to as, as much detail as possible. And finally, the analysis, we're going to be touching on this a little bit from what we're going to be doing in our, our modeling perspective. So, um, the, the next slide here just shows a, a table of this, and this is in the textbook. It gives some common perspectives. And so we have the, the system thinking, the, you're then have a, a, this development process uh, that's associated with system engineering, and then you have this broad perspective on engineering systems. So all of this is are things that you want to be mindful as you're, you're thinking about what it means to be a systems engineer. Systems thinking is a method of achieving the, the main, and maintaining a system design in which every requirement is carefully monitored and carefully controlled, including the human factor. These systems almost um, across the board are gonna have any human um, that's involved in its operation. The engineering system view encompasses not only traditional engineering disciplines, but technical and management domains, social, political, legal, and human domains, and scales at the extremes are a particular interest due to their complexity. And so there's a, a lot of different ways of how we can be um, capturing this. Um, I'll be showing you um, quickly a couple of these. Uh, the, the, the linear model, this is something that our textbook uses. And so for some of the graphics, we'll be seeing that go over time. There's a system engineering V, if that's not a term you've heard, um, keep that in mind. You can have a spiral and also waterfall, and I'll show you some examples of that in a, in a few minutes. So I'm not going to go through this in details, but um, we're going to try and live it out, by getting a chance to be thinking of what, what it is like as a systems engineer. So um, there's just a lot of things that go into system engineering. Um, and so this is just a chart trying to show the, the principles and, and, and practices that are associated with it. And so each one of you is going to have your home base for your system engineering. So maybe it's electrical, maybe it's mechanical, maybe it's a general system engineering. 
Maybe you want to go for a master's or a PhD, and so you may want to go a little bit more deeply into one of these things. Um, even having a master's degree in system engineering or a PhD, um, those are all possibles. Thinking about the domain, um, uh, one student recently came up and said, I would just love to work for JPL. He's already starting to think about there's a certain area that he would like to work. And aerospace is a general term for it, Sp space exploration. Think about that. I is there a, um, a domain, maybe focusing on something like healthcare, for example, or energy? Um, when you're dealing with system engineering, you have to be thinking about integration. Eventually, all of these des desperate parts, we had this funky looking chart here, all of this has to coalesce into one single system. And so those are just some of the highlights that I'll just mention um, as, as a quick introduction. So let me show you a couple examples of um, the, the viewpoints and, and some of these things that we have for, for, for laying out um, a, a system. And so we have an engineering point of view, technical, social, human, political, management. All of these are things that are out there. And as you're developing these complex types of systems, you're going to be bumping into a lot of these things, coming up with an architecture, um, thinking about um, um, how you're going to actually, um, you don't have to build everything. You can actually do a lot with modeling and simulation. And so it's a lot cheaper to build a model than actually build hardware. And so this is something that you can be doing early on. That's something that would be available. Um, you're going to have to be thinking about what, as you come up with a, a concept, what type of subject matter experts are you going to need? And so how are they going to have to work together and, and meet what was required by the customer to to make this happen. How is it going to operate? Um, and so coming up with a project management plan. And so these are just a lot of things that start to be laid out that need to be addressed. So we're gonna be seeing this chart or, and then getting more detailed into this. And if you, you might not have catch this, but this is on the cover of our textbook. And we're, we're showing these three main areas, the concept development, the engineering development, and the post development, the three main phases in the life cycle of a system that needs to be addressed. And then I'll just have three charts that show you some approaches. Um, you can be thinking of a, a waterfall approach and some of the, the NASA um, charts that I'll be sharing from our NASA textbook show this. We can see this, some of these major things here, requirements analysis. So once you get an idea of what you want to do, you have to think of the requirements. Then you want to start to group it into functions. And functions isn't putting it into hardware yet. You're trying to figure out what does it need to do. And then you can start to get into that next level of coming up with a physical way of laying it out. And then finally, that's when you do the, the design and implementation based on what you've learned from, from those things. We have the system engineering V, and so you do the design on this side of the V, and then you do the, the test and validation on the other, and then you actually deploy it. And so that's what we have for the, the system engineering V. Another way of thinking about it is a, a spiral. And so you basically spiral in and in until you finally get to the, the final um, way of having things com completed. So those are just a couple areas that we have in the textbook that you can be looking at. So starting on now, and then mostly on Thursdays, we wanna be thinking about what do you want to build? What do you wanna be creating? Um, I remember I've actually worked for two system, two system engineering and integration research and development centers. And when I was interviewing for the first one, when I talked with the, the general manager and what he said for a system engineer, instead of having to work harder, he has to think harder. And so I'm trying to convey maybe a perspective that might be something new to you. And I can remember times in school 
after just getting done with uh, my finals, it just my brain hurt. And maybe you've had that expression already. And so that's an example that you're just challenging yourself to go to that next level. Um, and that's, that, that is a characteristic that's maybe a little bit more novel in system engineering because you're, you're trying to think of how to make sure everything comes together. So you're, you, all of it is your responsibility. <laughs> That, that's kind of a maybe a way of thinking about it. So this is just a listing of various types of complex systems. Maybe you're attracted to one of these. Um, um, I know, Nathan, you've been helping us out with our CubeSat effort, and so maybe that's something that you might want to be continuing to explore. Um, I've also had classes where everybody is doing a CubeSat. I decided not to make that a, quote, mandatory, so I've widened the the environment that you could pick something that you would like, but if but that is something that you could always fall back to, and um, feel free to to be doing that. And so these are some charts that you can um, refer to the textbook that it then starts to get into still at a very high level some of the specifics that would be things that would need to be fleshed out for each one of those, and so there's just a couple of charts that. Um, give you a chance to be thinking about that. Um, so what are the system engineering activities and products? And so a full system lifecycle view illustrates the, the close relationship with the management process and leads to a large diverse set of activities and products. And so um, this is just um, one way of thinking about that all. Um, um, and so context diagrams, problem definition, um, user needs, concept of operations, scenarios, uh, use cases, requirements, and technology readiness. All of these are things that are, are out there that you will be doing. And we'll be getting a chance to be touching on a lot of these things with the stuff that we're doing with our system L modeling. So system engineering is, is recognized as a profession on its own. And so um, I know um, there's been at least a handful of graduates that have gone directly into system engineering. And so maybe that would be something that you would find interesting. Um, if nothing else, it could be a component of what you would be doing. And so this course might be something that would help you to get a better sense of that. There's There are various... Um, um, professional organizations out there. And COSI is one that is, is really focused on system engineering. And so that might be something that you might want to be aware of. So how does a system engineer um, develop in his career? And so some of you may choose system engineering, you may not, but even still there would be some similarities in terms of your growth path. And so you, um, you can have this OJT, on-the-job training. You start to um, start with your bachelor's, your master's, maybe a PhD, but it, it's somewhere between a bachelor's and a master's is quite common in the system engineering area or in um, companies that are dealing with enterprise large types of, of systems. And so, um, where do you see yourself wanting to go? Do you want to be going into being a specialist? Do you maybe want to see yourself going into management or maybe graduating towards um, more in the financial um, regime? Those are all possible things that are, are out there. And I'll just refer you to the, the textbook for, for more details to be unpacking that and thinking about that in further detail. Um, the textbook gives a couple different ways of, of thinking about this. Um, they have something called the, the T model. I'll show a chart in that. But some um, the system engineering profession is difficult but rewarding. And so at, some at times it may seem de deceiving that um, um, in that way that the buck stops with you. You know, you're, you're the technical lead for everything that's being done. You know, when things are large, it's not only you, it's a team of system engineers. So especially when you're starting at a company, you're not going to be the big cheese. You're going to be on the team, but eventually you're going to be going in that direction. 
But what are some of the characteristics that a system engineer would, would be a good problem solver and should welcome challenges? Is well-grounded technically with broad interest, um, is analytical and systematic, but also creative, is a superior communicator with leadership skills. And, um, and then we'll get into this team model in a, a minute. The team model represents a proper convergence of experience, education, mentoring, and technical depth necessary to become a successful and an influential system engineer. So um, what are the career elements here? These are some things that you can, um, you can be seen in the textbook. You, you want to exposure to the big picture, ability to multiplex. And this is something that can happen. You, you get as far as you can on this area, so you go to another area. So you're, you're like you're spinning plates and you're trying to keep them all going. Um, um, you are okay with complexity and you're, you like the idea of being assigned challenging problems. Those are things that you um, move towards rather than moving away. Um, so, so employers seeking to develop system engineers to um, com competitively address more challenges problems should provide key staff with relevant system engineering work experience activities that require mature system thinking and opportunities for system engineering education and training. And so this figure is trying to give a, a sense of what that might be looking like. And so um, I'll let you ponder that. And this is in the lecture notes. It's also in the textbook. And so this is this model T. And so you can be getting a rough tra trajectory. Some people go up this faster. Maybe some people um, go at it a little bit slower. There's other things in their life that may be a priority. Um, and so you can see you get your, your, your base is getting your education. Right now you're getting your undergraduate. Where do you want to see yourself? Where are people? Get on LinkedIn or Handshake. I'm on LinkedIn and start to look at people in your desired area and see where they are, what experiences that they had. And so you want to be thinking two or three steps beyond where you are at. And so first of all, you want to get a job. Then you start to be seeing that um, you, you're part of a team and then you become a lead, become a lead of a small project, become a lead of a large project. And so then you migrate from a project to a whole program. Okay, instead of just maybe a subsystem or it's a whole program. And then you are now a, a program lead for not just a single program, but systems. And you can see how that complexity goes up over, over time. And so this just gives you an idea of what it could look like for your career development. So that's another serendipity that you'll have in this textbook and some of the stuff that we'll be covering this course. You can be thinking about longevity and what you want to be doing um, with your career. So we talked about what is system engineering. We gave an introduction to the system engineering landscape. We gave some perspective on the, 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 the viewpoint of what a system engineer is. Um, we gave examples of the system engineering, uh, systems requiring systems engineering. So typically larger. So just about anything and everything that's built at JPL. There's a lot of aerospace companies that are around here. Um, but if you're just going to be designing something simple, it could just be a subject matter experts, maybe with a little bit of, um, some packaging engineers to, to make that into a product, but getting something a little bit beyond that, you're gonna definitely need uh, system engineering. We talked about system engineering activities and products, um, system engineering as a profession, and finally system engineering career development models that are out there. Any comments or questions on that? Okay, I think that's a good um, breaking point there. Um, please feel free to text test the 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 the, um, the Zoom link between now and and Thursday. Um, and if you have any problems, um, please let me know, and um, I'll be glad to to ensure that you're able to successfully get in for our class um, on Thursday. Okay, 
And I will send a, um, an update on visual paradigms and give you the link to go ahead and download that. And so um, I would recommend that you have that done by Thursday so that we can start to be doing hands-on. That's another thing why, uh, one of the reasons why I like having Thursdays be uh, virtual so that you're in a place where you're gonna have your computer. It's easy for, for you to share your screen. I can share my screen and we can go back and forth with us developing models. So you need to think of that big idea of what you wanna do with your project. And then we wanna start actually building and fleshing out that, that idea using model-based system engineering as a tool. Okay? Um, yes, it's also embedded into the assignments. Um, it, yeah, well, we'll be covering that starting on Thursday. We'll get into more details about what is that, the expectations for, for each one of those assignments, okay? All right. You don't, the, well, let me put it this way. I would hope by Thursday, you at least have a, a, an idea of what you would like to do. Um, the, there is a schedule that's, that's shared within Canvas that will show you when that project proposal is due. And so that may be a perspective that's new to some of you. Some of you have had a class with me before, so you had a little bit of an idea of this project type of work that I, that I have. But after you're done with school, this is the way it's gonna go. Before you actually start working on something, we'll write up a proposal. That's the first thing that they're gonna ask you. And so this is now, it's you get a chance to, to set your, your own trajectory where you wanna be going with this course. For 50% of this course, it's gonna be you doing something that you're interested in. Now, I'm welcome to have that discussion. Let's, let's start to, to work together yeah, I can give you some 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 tips, some feedback, and, and stuff like that. Okay, does that help? All right. 